live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering VMworld 2017. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem partners. Welcome back to theCUBE. We're on day three of our continuing coverage of VMworld 2017. We've all counted our steps, lots of steps we've gotten in, lots of great conversations. I am Lisa Martin with my co-host John Troyer. We're joined now by two guests who are new to theCUBE. Chanda Dhani, Senior Director of Product Marketing, Storage, and Availability at VMware. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. And you're also joined by Mark Vaughn. You're the Director of Strategic Technology Group with Presidio. Welcome. Yes ma'am, thank you. So guys, we're day three of, uh, hopefully your feet aren't too sore, of VMworld 2017. Big announcements on Monday about VCF on AWS yesterday, the pivotal container service with Google. Uh, Pat Gelsinger mentioned on Monday, 10,000 customers on vSAN. Chanda, what have you heard from customers at the event? What has their reaction been to some of the great news that's been announced? So customers are actually really excited. Uh, they see VMware evolve and become more and more mature and bigger and they see us as a partner. In the context of vSAN, they are even more excited. I met a lot of customers who wanted to try out our hands-on labs and these were actually storage admins who were like, I'm really interested, can you guide me through this process? I had a session on Sunday and I thought like, people are still pouring in, you know, checking into the hotel. And the session had four, five hundred people and it was on vSAN and there is so much of excitement. So it's really, really amazing, great time for vSAN right now. Wow, I, did Pat say adding a hundred customers a week? Yes, we are adding hundred customers That's a week. That's remarkable, and so it sounds like you're seeing maybe a shift in terms of the, the skill types that are wanting to learn about this technology? Exactly, so VI admins have always been a champion, but what has been very interesting this VM world that a lot of storage admins have come to the show and they are all at the hands-on labs, in the sessions, wanting to learn about it more and more. From a market perspective, Mark, question for you. Given that, sounds like, we and we're hearing quite a bit, John, uh, over the last couple of days on both of our sets here, uh, generational shifts, skill set shifts. In terms of shifts and trends in the market, what are some of the data center trends, Mark, that you've heard articulated on the show floor and from you know, your partner VMware this week? Uh, well, there's definitely the shift with VMware Cloud on AWS. That's been a, a real emphasis this week, uh, which again builds on what we've been doing in the private data center. So building on vSAN, building on NSX, building on the VMware ESX hypervisor. Um, so those are some trends we've really seen, and honestly, in the data center in general, we've seen a shift in storage the last few years. So it's moving more towards an emphasis on the software. So whether you're releasing that now as a virtual appliance or a cloud appliance, or going a step further and having a solution that is totally software defined, like vSAN, we're beginning to really see the emphasis move from hardware to software. So Mark, uh, we've had a lot of innovation in hyper-converged infrastructure in the last few years, um, with vSAN being one of the pillars of innovation. But the market is, is interesting, a lot of players in the market, some being pulled out, uh, others entering. Uh, where are we in this, whole, uh, in this whole evolution? What is the state of hyper-converged uh, infrastructure and hyper-converged storage uh, in 2017? As we look so much to public cloud, and it's been such a buzzword for the last few years, and We've noticed that a lot of our customers have moved to it and then realized it doesn't work everywhere. But what attracted them to the cloud, they still want even when they're on-prem on data center now. So they want that flexibility. They want the ability to scale easily. Uh, they want flexible billing as well and consumption-based models. And so software-defined storage and vSAN really create the ability to, you may not want everything in the cloud, but you can still have what you liked about the cloud in your own data center. And so that's part of the modernization story that we're walking through with a lot of our customers. John, how are you seeing in consumption models? Uh, software versus VMware ready nodes, uh, build your own, uh, your partner ecosystem. How are people taking, uh, you know, is it in the cloud, is it on-prem? How are people taking vSAN? Actually, this is one of the key reasons why customers like vSAN, the wise, wide choice of uh, consumption model that they have, they can, fully customize it, customize it, build it uh, themselves, they can go with the uh, ready nodes, they also ha have a choice to go with the appliance-based solution with uh, which we have with uh, Dell EMC called VxRail, and they also like the choice that 
what they could do on prem now it's uh, they can do it on aws and it's just yet another site for them and uh, for example disaster recovery as a service is one of the use cases they really want to move forward with i just came back from a customer meeting explaining to them how it would work and they're really excited and waiting for it to come so you mentioned dell emc and one of the the questions i had was just about one year post combination of, of Dell taking over. One of the things that was very clearly articulated during the keynote uh, by Michael Dell himself was that the importance of the VMware ecosystem um, really uh, uh, growing and um, the independence. So long time partners, Presidio and VMware, talk to us about your channel strategy and how it's going to evolve or is evolving as you, you need to give customers this flexibility of private, public, hybrid based on you know, their needs and this, and this consumption kind of driven model. How is the channel strategy evolving to facilitate that? You both, you both can take a shot at that. One thing I've noticed you know, up front when it comes to consumption models is we're actually seeing vendors like Dell and other OEM partners beginning to offer consumption models where you can actually now get hardware on six month, one year, you know, shorter term, where it gives you that flexibility of the cloud of you don't have to make the long term commitment to hardware, you can flex, you can grow, even when it's on prem. Uh, you can still have some of that flexibility and we've also worked uh, out some cost models for some of our customers where we can help them you know, have that flexibility and consumption models uh, to allow them to actually grow you know, on-prem in the, in the similar way that they would in the cloud. And Chana, kind of the same question for you, the, the channel strategy, kind of what, what do you see as some of the next steps to make that channel and even the partnership with Presidio right. even better? Right, so the, actually Presidio has been a very uh, successful partner for vSAN and talking about channel strategy, if we look at it, vSAN today has 10,000 customers, vSphere has 350,000 customers. We are not even 4% penetrated in our own install base and given the tight correlation between vSphere and vSAN, uh, we all know that vSphere attained this large install base through our channel. So for vSAN to have such a big install base and increase our penetration, it is actually channel that will do that for us. And Presidio is well ahead on that curve right now. So our strategy actually is related to server refresh. Uh, it is projected that by end of 2019, about 60% of our customers would be going through a server refresh. And as th they go through the server refresh, they adopt hyper-converged infrastructure more and more because they're buying these new servers, they say might as well buy a ready node. And uh, we want to ensure that our channel is well equipped to take advantage of this wave that is coming. So there are many things we are doing. For example, number one, that they are able to build their practice and Presidio is uh, quite ahead there but rest of the world is able to do that too globally. And secondly, we are uh, trying to simplify and streamline things for them by having uh, packages which they can sell easily. For example, we have a package of vSphere and vSAN called the HCI kit where we have uh, designed it such that the most profitable way to sell vSphere is to sell it with vSAN because if they sell vSphere, the uh, if they qualify, the ad plus at the back end is 10%, but if they sell the HCI kit, which is vSphere and uh, vSAN, the back end ad plus is 30%. So for our channel, the most profitable way is to sell it along with, sell vSphere is to sell it along with vSAN. Then we have also create, designed a whole bunch of sales tools, like they can go into an account, do an assessment, do a whole sizing for the Visa and ReadyNode, do a full ReadyNode configuration with our OEM partners such as uh, HP, Dell, you know, Fujitsu, Lenovo, et cetera. They are all at the uh, solution exchange here. And then they can have a full uh, TCO conversation. All of this is now available for our channel. And we went ahead and did a practice builder workshop in all major cities globally to help them come up to speed on all this stuff. Uh, there are many other programs and we are now providing POC gear so that you can actually do successful POCs too. So it's and now execution for us. Yes, and it's been great because VMware has really created an ecosystem that we can work well within and it actually creates a journey for our customers so we've been able to walk a number of customers, I was working with a customer just this week that has been in a long time ESX you know, environment for their VMware hypervisor. Probably four years ago, they began using vSAN early on. 
And since that time, they've moved, vSAN is now their primary storage. And now they're moving into deploying NSX. And as that is going along, they're beginning to look at vRealize operations, they're beginning to look at AirWatch. So it really creates an ecosystem that we can walk people through the journey of moving you know, into these. And there's, there's often opportunities where we can come in and you know, do a number of these at a time, but there's also a lot of opportunities where customers kind of need to mature their own process and grow exactly. through this journey. Exactly. Well, Mark, I'd, I'd like to drill down on that a little bit. I, I mean, I've known you for years, right? Back in the day when uh, you, the, the virtualization admin was the role that was just created and started right. to, to bridge some of those silos between storage, networking, Windows, security, teams. Let's talk, we talked about the channel, let's talk about the customer uptake and enablement on their side. Uh, who, is the, who are the people that are being trained on this? Is it, is it still, uh, uh, do folks still have the traditional storage uh, admin? Is it a, a combined team? Uh, who's, who's buying it, who's responsible for it, and, and how are you helping them succeed with vSAN? We really have to approach that based on each customer's individual makeup and we need to see how their organizations worked out, where their, their skill sets lie, but we see that really as a, a mix. It's been much the same way with networking. Uh, at first there was, you know, networking was separate from virtual networking, and they quickly realized as, you know, 80, 90 percent or more of their environment became virtualized, you can't just sit outside of the hypervisor, you have to be participating in the network inside the hypervisor as well. So there's definitely skill sets that the storage admin brings to bear that the average, you know, system admin doesn't have. So it's really a partnering of the two. And I see the same thing with cloud. So where virtualization admin was a niche 10 years ago, now you can't work in the data center if you don't know how to participate in the virtualization environment and you're not familiar with VMware. Cloud is kind of becoming a niche, but in five years you won't be able to work in the data center if you don't know cloud. Yeah, what's one of the, the trends that we've seen as well, just in doing some you know, reading online, is that it used to be everybody was trained, you know, that would come here to VMware would be trained in, in virtualization and certifications, and now we're starting to see that shift towards cloud. Um, it sounds like there's been an, this natu natural evolution that's been customer driven in terms of the enablement and the education, but you're now seeing the importance of the guys and gals that are storage admin, maybe the system admins as well, the, the VI admins. How are you guys working together to sort of tailor the conversation uh, as, um, more, you can see a diversity in the types of people that are interested in this technology, and as the conversation, maybe even on the storage side, goes up to this, the C level, because they're storing massive amounts of data, they've got to be able to um, extract value from it for new lines of business. How is your enablement um, evolving as these skill sets are shifting? All right, so, the name hyperconvergence actually says it all. It's not just causing convergence of technologies, it's causing convergence of people and skill set and teams as well. And that does include uh, people who used to be just compute admins and storage admins and network admins now. So going back to the context of how we are doing the enablement, I think uh, what we are doing right now is helping each side understand the value and uh, having them come together. Earlier they used to work as silos and now the teams are coming together just as the technology is coming together. And as regards talking to uh, decision makers in the organizations, at a CIO level people are more interested in competitive advantage for their own organization. And we find that the hyperconvergence technology allows the entire organization to move fast. So CIOs are able to do their business initiatives in a much faster way, get their profits coming in a much faster way, their risks are minimal. So they like the technology for that reason. And VP of infrastructure, applications, et cetera, like the technology because it streamlines the operation, standardizes the process for them. Uh, virtual VI admins have always been a champion because it's so easy to use for them, the learning curve is very less. And storage admins really like it because at a time when their traditional array is running out of capacity or horsepower, they don't have the budget to go and procure something new. They do have the budget to go and acquire a few servers and SSDs. They are still able to move forward and give the organization what it needs within the uh, budget constraints and yet meet the timelines. So th this is something which is driving a lot of convergence. And, and storage has always been so critical to how virtualization works and operates from vMotion to you know, DRS to so many baseline features, 
you know, they relied on the underlying storage. So the storage admins and the VI admins have been growing closer and closer together for a long time. But what we're seeing with hyper-converged and um, whether it's on-prem or especially in the cloud, is it's not only changing the storage technology, but it's changing the cost model. So now the conversation also has to happen at a business level of, you know, is this going to be CapEx? Is this going to be OpEx? Okay. Is this going to be a traditional purchase method? Is this going to be a consumption method? So the conversation now actually has to transcend from just the technology to also the business impact and the business drivers behind selecting, you know, one method or another. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And that's an, a theme that we're hearing a lot as customers talk about digital transformation. Well, I love the plan words with uh, convergence, and it sounds like the, the different folks that are now really um, needing this type of technology are folks that you've had the chance to, to speak with at the show. So we want to thank you guys for taking the time on day three to come and yes. chat with us on theCUBE. Yes, thank, thank you. you very thank much. Thank you so much. For our guests and for my co-host John Troyer, I'm Lisa Martin. You've been watching theCUBE live on day three, continuing coverage of VMworld 2017. We'll be right back after a short break.